Of course, none of these creatures are alive today, and there are no creatures that are alive today that move in the same way that the dinosaurs did. We simply don't have that skeletal structure around anymore. The first thing we're going to do is to look at real animals in the wild today. How does their way of life affect the way they move? How does the shape of their body affect their movement? And then we'll look at the dinosaurs and look at their environment and try and make the same guesses. It's a sort of primitive form of motion capture, really. For the movement so of Diplodocus, Mike Milne and his team of animators took a close look at elephants. Good girl. Right. With them was paleontologist and sauropod expert Kent Stevens. But I'm really surprised about how little, little lateral movement there is. I had expected a far wider yeah. side to side sway. Yeah. I think the gait might be very similar. Yes. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with the the fluidity of the movement. Because it's a smaller creature? No, uh, because this is a far more intelligent creature. Uh, when you take a sauropod that may be five or more times heavier, but the brain is about the size of my fist, I just don't see the, the neural processes there operating to do that beautiful dance that we're seeing with that guy there. So we can take the movement of the limbs, uh, <coughs> uh, but not necessarily the speed of them and, and the fluidity with which they yeah. move. I think one of the things that's really important is to see how the weight gets pulled back. I notice that as soon as she stops, she locks her knees back in. Yeah. Too. And, and the legs are very columnar. And that weight distribution stuff, I could imagine. Armed with this sort of knowledge, the animators soon got the Diplodocus moving. One of the key things you can see in the finished animation is that there are always at least three feet on the ground to distribute the giant's weight but others were more stubborn. Getting the pterosaurs to fly had been relatively straightforward. Making them walk was a puzzle. This, uh, surprisingly, is a pterosaur. Um, it's very unusual because it's on the ground. Its wings have got to bend all the way around so that it can walk. It's very odd. It doesn't match anything in, in nature today. Uh, what we've had to parallel it as is something like a, an old man on crutches. No. No. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> OK. It does not look real. Uh, I don't think it works. Um, it just feels too pantomime. It doesn't feel like anything that would actually exist and walk like this. It looks comical. It's, it, it's, it's not in balance. Put a bit of twist in the body, make it look like you're really struggling so to... Go from that to that. Okay. Yeah, you got it. OK. That's it. Excellent. That's good. That's it. You yeah. got it. Yep. Right. And then That's good. Yeah, that works better. Mm. Well, he's finished. Um, we're happy with him. We tried the parallel walk, we tried the hop, um, all different types of moves, but we decided that this alternate um, back leg, forward leg, back other back leg, other forward leg worked really well. And what I did in the end, because his front legs are shorter, I sort of gave him loads of reach with his shoulders and his spine, which so he kind of swaggers forward like that, which gives him extra reach he needs to compensate for his short front legs. Here's what we've come up with for Liploridin. It's kind of flying through the water with alternating flippers. It's a very efficient movement, which uh, saves it energy because it's such a big animal. As the back ones go down, the front ones are pushed up by the movement, and then vice versa. One by one, the statues were coming to life. In the process, even the paleontologists were learning a thing or two. When working with the animators and the designers, I was able to see my skeletal reconstructions changed into something more like a dynamic animal moving. By doing that, I had to think very seriously about the, the dynamics of the joints, the way that the bones moved relative to one another. That's the critical difference that these animation programs provide for us. And that brings the animals more to life than I had appreciated, first of all.
the filmmakers in making computer models and physical models have been actually teaching the paleontologists some things. They've been showing us what works and what doesn't work, and I've been delighted to see that the information is actually flowing in, in both directions.